So about 10 years ago, a YouTube video changed my life and it led me on a journey to where I got to hang out with a famous YouTuber and it exposed a lot of the fear in me. See, in that original video, a guy pulled the TV out of a dumpster and he fixed it for like a dollar. And I was watching this thing in amazement, wishing that I could do something like that. But I decided I'm gonna give this a try and I fixed my first TV and ever since I've been facing new fears and tackling new projects. Like this guy who took dead laptop batteries and turned them into a monster 25 kilowatt hour power wall for his house. So if it wasn't for that original video, I'd be too afraid to maybe open this up and try something cool with it. But in this video, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open this up, I'm gonna show you how people take these dead laptop batteries and turn them into treasure, and I'm gonna show you my trip to visit Jehu Garcia, the person who first showed me what you can do with these. So in case you don't know him, Jehu has a popular YouTube channel. One of his famous projects is that he turned a VW Samba into an electric car and he's been featured in popular media like Vice. But before we get to him and the tour I got out at his place, let's talk about these non-functioning laptop batteries. They don't take a charge, so most people throw them away. But some people really want these and they even pay money for them. So what's the secret? The secret is this. This looks like it's one battery, but really there are many batteries inside of here and not all of them are bad. So let's open this up and see what we find inside. This is a battery pack from one of my old laptops and it quit working years ago, so no harm in giving this a try. I've actually never opened one of these up before, but as always, when you're trying something new, go slow and definitely use common sense. So what I'm trying to do is separate the plastic at the seams and break any adhesive, and the main thing I don't wanna do is accidentally puncture the cells or cause a short circuit. Now there isn't much plastic here and I'm using sharp objects, so I'm trying to be careful. I had quite a difficult time opening this up because the plastic would bend and not break at the seam and I kept wondering, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And really, this is taking about 30 minutes. It's not worth my time for a few dollars worth of rechargeable batteries, but honestly, trying something new, tackling your fears, really is priceless. So after all the wrestling and breaking plastic, I did get the first cell out and I was excited to see that it was made by Samsung, a name brand quality cell. And then in just a few minutes later, I got the rest of the batteries out and you can see this isn't just one battery, but there are six individual batteries here. I think YouTube is so cool because I've watched other people do this and it gives you a sense of confidence that you could try it. And now instead of one dead laptop battery, I potentially have six batteries. So let me pause here in case you're not familiar with what these kind of batteries are. These are called 18650s. They're not AA, they're not AAA like you might be used to, but they are lithium ion rechargeable batteries of a certain size. These are very popular and they, even for many years they were used in Tesla cars as their main batteries. Now you may not have never seen these kind of batteries before, but you have definitely used them. They're not only in laptop batteries and Teslas, but they're also in things like these battery banks here that you probably have to charge up your phone or whatever. And you could see, just based on the size, there's probably two of these batteries in this battery bank. Now over here is a battery bank where I took off the outer shell and you can see what's on the inside. There's one of these 18650s and there's the charging circuitry and the USB connector right there. Now, these things are great to have if you wanna put them in your bag or your purse, but they're not gonna power very much. So if, say if your house power goes out and you want battery backup, you're gonna need a whole lot more. So if you want something that's portable and can power your house, then you wanna check out today's sponsor's flagship product, the EcoFlow Delta Pro. This is the EcoFlow Delta Pro. And if you wanna be serious about battery backup or power for your home or RV, then this beast may be what you're looking for. This power station on wheels is rugged and sports it's a huge 3600 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery with a myriad of charging and discharging options and available accessories. To give you a sense of how long this battery lasts on a full charge, it ran my full size refrigerator freezer for our family of seven for over 28 hours without any charging in between. The Delta Pro has a 30 volt standard RV plug in the front and with an adapter, it can power almost everything in my RV, which has a 50 amp service. You can charge it up by solar up to 1600 watts of input and you can even combine this with other charging methods like the EcoFlow gas generator and at EV stations with an adapter and you can double your capacity with each additional smart battery. The batteries in here are lithium iron phosphate which is the same as what electric vehicles are switching to. They're safer plus they have a longer cycle life. You can connect the Delta Pro to the EcoFlow app with Wi-Fi 
and with Bluetooth, and the app will give you about every piece of information you want to know for in and output wattages, as well as change a number of settings. So the Delta Pro is perfect to have on hand for a power outage, or maybe even to use for your RV, campsite, or even a trade show. And it's the hub for an array of accessories and other connected products for the EcoFlow ecosystem. So one quick way to tell the health of each of these six cells is to test their voltage with a multimeter. Now, even though these batteries probably haven't been charged for like five years, they still retain electric potential. For these types of 18650 batteries what I'm looking for are voltages of 3 volts or higher as a good sign of health now out of the six batteries here I measured two that had 1.8 volts and the rest measured 3 volts or higher so likely it's these two low voltage cells that were the reason why the laptop stopped charging the battery pack but I'm assuming these other four cells are good. So to test to see if they're actually good, I'm gonna run them through a battery charger that has a feature that can test rechargeable batteries. This is a very popular type of charger that can work with many different sizes and types of rechargeable batteries, so it's really handy to have. So what this test mode is going to do is that it's gonna to try to completely cycle the batteries. It's gonna charge them all the way up, then drain the battery all the way down, and then charge it back up again to 100%. And when it's finished, not only will I have charged batteries, this will also report the capacity or the energy storage of each battery and their voltage, and I'll have a pretty good idea of their health. Now, because this is my first time and I'm a little concerned, I did keep an eye on these with my thermal imaging camera while they were charging to look for any excessive heat buildup, and thankfully, there wasn't any of that, and they seemed to be charging normally. And after the tests were completed, I was excited to see that all four batteries had very healthy capacities, around 1,700 milliamp hours, and they all held over four volts of charge. People find all kinds of uses for these 18650s. They make new battery banks for power backup or new batteries for their e-bikes or other projects. But I'm not planning to do a big project with these now, though I do have a use for them. These LED flashlights made by GearLight take 18650 batteries. Now you may have seen these before. These came with these lights. This is a holder for three AAA batteries. And notice the size. It's about the same size as an 18650. And usually this means when you see this, it usually means you can replace it, drop in a new 18650 like this. And you can do that with these flashlights. They actually give you a plastic holder to keep the battery from rolling around. So this whole project is pretty fun because it's uh, these batteries are completely usable. They hold a good amount of charge. And if not for YouTube, I would have gotten rid of that dead laptop battery. And though I tried to dispose it in the proper way, you know, who knows, it could have ended up in a landfill somewhere. But instead, I have four lithium ion rechargeable batteries for my flashlights and potentially future projects. So I first learned about this idea from YouTuber Jehu Garcia. And when I went out to California recently, I overcame some fear and reached out to him. I kind of felt like I was asking a girl out on a date, was he gonna reject me or not? But he was super cool and said, hey, hang out, and we hung out all day long. So I hope you enjoy this behind the scenes look of a famous YouTuber's workshop and keep an eye out for projects involving 18650s. I, so here's the thing. I've been wanting to do a tour video for since I did this, but I, since I can't finish it, I'm like, no, I'm like, <laughs> but this is my shop. This is the power wall that you guys have seen in the video. Uh, I didn't do uh, such a good job as I should have done, but I am going to. This is the next bus that is going to be converted to electric. This is number three. Number three. In the fleet. Nice. Uh, and then this is four. This was a gift. It's going to need uh, quite a bit more work. <laughs> I like its remote control up there. Oh, no, no. This remote is for the sign over here. So this is a VW shop sign because it's going to have, you know, and um, let's see. There we go. Did you make that? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, can I get a big giant sign? And it's like, yeah, but they're thousands of dollars, right? So I'm like, oh, I'm not going to pay thousands of dollars. Like. I'll pay hundreds of dollars. Wow, did you make a YouTube video on that? I didn't. Oh. It was uh, crazy. I was like in such a hurry to finish this place just so I can get back to like doing things that I was like, no, I'm just, you know. So this is gonna be number four. This is the original Samba right here. This is the one that everybody knows. It's got millions of views on YouTube. Uh, I parked it last year because I was supposed to be restoring it, like basically painting it, but here we are a year later. <laughs> but you have your you have your other one, so. So I built that one so I can daily drive because uh -huh. I'm like I'm not gonna drive a uh -huh. car. But here it is, and then this is Misa's. My brother Misa, he got into this one. And then here's where we're working. We're gonna put two motors. I haven't shown this one actually. It'd be the first one to show it. 
two motors so we can have two, two, 200 horsepower on the Zambas. So the fleet is going to have quite a bit of horsepower to be able to sh drive around without shifting any gears. So all you guys that don't know how to drive stick shift, no problem. They'll be able to drive one of my, one of my buses. But they should learn. They should learn. Yeah, why not learn? And these are the batteries that we're going to put into them. They're going to be scooter batteries. That's probably going to be a video that's going to get quite a bit of views. Scooter batteries. We're going to put about 100 of these to 140 of these per bus. And it's going to uh, generate about 200 miles of range. Is that, is that your electric skateboard? Yeah, it's got like 40 miles of range. And then these are all the motors that are going to go into the fleet. This is 35 systems. I really got a deal on those. <laughs> it's like, there's no other way that you can get so many of these. I don't think you can even buy them right now. Like they're short handed because you know, everything's kind of backed up. And then here are all the wheels for the next ones. Some of the fancy ones, these are split face. I don't know if that's actually a good thing because you're taking a 911 wheel and then they're just with the CNC, they're cutting the center oh. <laughs> to make spokes. But I'm like, does that mean it's weaker? It we'll just, see. It just has to last. We'll see when the wheels fall off. I'm ready. We will do our podcasts, my uh, personal transportation device. Have you been in one of these? Me? No. You want to get in one? Yeah, I'll try one. Dude, these things are so fun. The background of every one of my videos. <laughs> you know, it's fun to uh, be at the place that you just see on TV. <laughs> yes. Here are the projects that are undone. This is the one that everybody's asking me because I've been saying that I'm almost done. It's going to be released going to be able to coming soon coming soon it's going to be a makita box that you can put a bunch of battery in there and then you'll be able to have 24 volt battery for whatever you want this is the seat of a go-kart that i'm going to build because i have a pallet full of those so that scooter that you were riding right now thousands of those wheels that are available so i'm like oh let's build a go-kart uh we're getting into making a bunch of batteries uh made into these canisters so that's what those boards Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and I mean, those boards go everywhere, right? You can make little batteries like this or giant batteries like this. So this is where the YouTubes happen? This is where, yeah. And then people always comment how I'm a big mess. I should clean my desk. It's true. Just show them this part right here. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> can move this out of the way. I should clean. Oh! Here we go, we'll mount it right here. So I usually use these to connect to the, uh, things here to be able to see if they have a sine wave because you know they all say sine wave uh -huh. but some cheap ones and since i was reviewing some of the cheaper ones like this one by the way this i think these people screwed everyone it's well, a perfect example is. of like the oh God, the crowdfunding crowdfunded thing. Okay. and then uh -huh. a bunch of people paid and then i think they disappeared i don't Huh. As far as I know, they haven't had an update in a while, <laughs> okay. and I'm like, oh my Oops. god! So because I was kind of reviewing some of these cheaper ones, well, you gotta you gotta test the the output. You know, it's like, is it sine wave or is it just like crappy inverter that you can put? That as soon as you don't test them, then you get a bunch of people in the comments saying like, oh, what's the sine wave? Is it clean? Uh, and I'm like, oh, there are people who have like legitimate concerns, like the radio people. They have like this handheld uh, groups yeah. of stuff, uh -huh. and so if they're noisy, they're kind of useless because they can't power their radio this is my 20 kilowatt hour battery pack that i never finish and i never shown it just because i'm afraid that um we don't have the manpower to build all these boards when people start ordering them i don't want to annoy my viewers <laughs> when i annoy you guys is totally just you know because i can't help it but in this case i i can help it and then like there's all kinds of these projects, like this one right here, for example. It's one to use 26 650s. These are lithium iron phosphate. And this is a pack that will do 12 volts. And this is the uh, mega, what'd you call it? Mega, mega dongle. dongle. Oh. So I actually made a whole like. You are just not kidding about how many projects so you're working on. This battery here, have you, you do have you ever ride a skateboard? Uh, I mean, a little bit. So the thing about the skateboard is that it flexes, right? Mm -hmm. So they need to flex. So mm -hmm. whatever battery you put on top from the bottom, if it doesn't flex, then it doesn't feel like a real skateboard. It just feels like some. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, we need to make some kind of battery that flexes with the board. Oh, uh, I see. And that's the whole. But I built it. I designed it. I built it. 
we made these. I think we have like a hundred of these things made already. And I never made the video. So it's a project that's like 99% that all I need is like to make the video. <laughs> but no visit to Jehu would be complete without a ride in his electric Samba. He took me up into the California hills and we got to enjoy a beautiful sunset. Does this road go all the way up? Yeah, I, I mean, it goes up to a certain point wow. and then after that it stops. Yeah. That's so cool. Is that your new house up there? <laughs> Maybe. At least? Yeah. It's not more? It's not more, yeah. Look at all that smoke. Smoke? Well, the, the, Oh, the haze. Yeah. I remember I was flying my drone here and then the guy came out like, hey, who's there? And then he, and then I started talking to him and then he's like, oh yeah, you can come out here anytime you want, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he came to yell at me and at the end it was like, oh yeah, you're cool. <laughs> do you ever, do you ever do that? I'm a YouTuber, it's okay. <laughs> no. You didn't play that one. My visit with Jehu was awesome, and it was a reminder that we can face our fears, try new projects, and that things like YouTube and the internet offer so much to help us. Let me know what new project you're trying or thinking about in the comment section. And thank you to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. I'll post links in the description to the Delta Pro, and comment or shoot me an email if you have any questions about it.